Iron has been omitted from our diet for five hundred years. If you have anemia, your blood doesn't carry enough oxygen from the lungs to the rest of your body. A major cause of anemia is iron deficiency, which is largely a reversible condition. Addressing the issue early may help older adults keep a sound mind. When the brain is deprived, it may affect your mental health. When there is anemia, the proper nutrition and proper food of the brain is not maintained, which in the long run, the capability of of the brain decreases. Older adults face a higher risk of anemia, and now researchers believe it could be sapping them of their memory. Iron is by far the most important of the minerals in the mineral kingdom. That mineral is by far the most important. Why? Because it is electrical, like the rest, but it has magnet. It's the only magnetic one in the whole ramification of life. Iron. Why iron is so important? Because upon taking iron, we take all of the minerals proportionally balanced. Everybody that's sick is anemic. If you have a simple cold, if you have any disease, I don't care what disease you have, you're anemic. Because if your iron was up to par, like I said, you would not be sick. Impossible. All right. Have you ever had one of those days where you're just dragging, no matter how much coffee you drink? You're yawning at noon. Your brain feels like it's running on dial-up and all you can think about is getting back to bed. Well, spoiler alert, it might not be lack of sleep. It could be your iron levels quietly throwing a wrench in the works. It is impossible for you to get sick if your iron level is up to par. Yep, iron deficiency is a sneaky one, and it can make you feel like you're constantly running on empty. Now, don't go running for the supplement aisle just yet. There's a lot more to know especially if you want to feel good without popping pills like Tic Tacs. Today, we're diving into the dark truth about iron and why it's so important. We're talking real deal stuff here, whole foods, expert tips, and even some surprising symptoms you'd never think were linked to iron. I've seen people eat like clay and crave it, cornstarch. That is typically a sign and symptom that you're anemic. You have an iron deficiency and you could also have a zinc deficiency as well too. The condition is often referred to as pica, which is a craving or eating things that are not food, okay? And so one day I walked into my cousin's house and I noticed that she had piles of like cornstarch. And so I asked her son, I was like, why does she have all of this cornstarch? And he goes, she eats it. And I was like, what do you mean she eats it? What does she put it in? Like, is she making something? She, he's like, no, she just takes the scoop of it and eats it. And I said, oh, she has a deficiency. And sure enough, she goes in and her iron levels are like through the floor. Okay, so craving cornstarch. Another one, number four, is craving ice. That's also a sign of iron deficiency as well, too. So if you ever see somebody who literally, they're on their way home and they stop at a store to get a cup of ice, or they're just always crunching on ice is typically a sign of iron deficiency. And our panel of experts, Dr. Sebi, Dr. Bobby Price, Dr. Barbara O'Neill, and more, have some eye-opening insights you'll want to hear. So let's start with the basics. Why is iron so important anyway? Picture this, iron is like the super efficient delivery service in your body, getting oxygen to every cell so you can think, move, and, well, live. Well, iron is important because iron makes hemoglobin. And at the center of every cell, we have hemoglobin. As a matter of fact, the combination of iron and hemoglobin is what makes blood red. And if you don't have enough iron, you will not have hemoglobin. And if you don't have hemoglobin, guess what? You will not be able to attach or bring the hemoglobin into the, I mean, the oxygen into the cell. If you can't oxygenate the cells, you cannot oxygenate tissues. Tissues are going to break down. Without enough iron, your muscles feel like jelly, your brain turns into a fog machine, and suddenly, climbing a flight of stairs feels like scaling Mount Everest. It's not just a nice-to-have. Iron is a must-have, if you want to feel like a functional human being. But here's where things get tricky. Iron isn't something your body can magically make on its own. You've got to eat it, and it's not just about chowing down any old food. Our experts have some solid advice on where to get iron, naturally. Think dark, leafy greens like spinach and kale, seeds like pumpkin and sunflower, and even lentils, which pack a punch without weighing you down. According to Dr. Sebi, the best iron is found in plants, where it's gentle on the body and absorbs naturally. Vegetable iron, 
one that is obtained from plants such as the sarsaparilla, the bardock, the yellow dock, such as the, uh, the one that we get from Honduras, the guaco, the contribu, the hombre grande. All these herbs are heavily laden with iron. Oh, and get this. Dr. Colin Campbell, a huge advocate for plant-based nutrition, points out that foods like tofu and beans are more than just fillers. They're iron-rich powerhouses that keep you energized without the baggage that comes with some animal-based sources. So, yeah, next time you're at the grocery store, maybe grab that bag of spinach. Your body's going to thank you later. All right, so iron's crucial. We get it. But here's the kicker. Most people with iron deficiency have no idea. The symptoms? They're sneaky. We're talking chronic fatigue, random muscle weakness, and that constant I-can't-think-straight feeling. The lack of iron causes 40 manifestation of disease because the body begins to lose energy. The immune system begins to give way. There is no oxygen going to the brain now because iron is low. And it is iron that conveys oxygen to our brain. Sound familiar? Iron deficiency symptoms are so common they're easy to ignore, especially when they creep in slowly. But it's a bigger deal than we think. Dr. Barbara O'Neill, who's all about natural health, says iron deficiency can look a lot like everyday stress, which is why people miss it. I suffered low iron for 13 years until I solved the puzzle. Now, iron is bound up in food and it needs acid to liberate it or free it from food. So most people with um, low iron, they're either bleeding very heavily at period time, so they need the Anna's Wild Yam Cream to stop that, and they also can be low in hydrochloric acid because the acid liberates the iron. That brain fog that has you staring blankly at your computer screen? Constantly feeling cold or getting sick out of the blue? These are just some of the telltale signs your body might be whispering, I need iron. And she's got an easy solution. Check out beets. Beetroot has a decent amount of iron in it and it also has the minerals vitamin C and folic acid. Vitamin C helps in better absorption of the iron in beetroot, while folic acid helps in formation of RBCs in blood. This combination of minerals in beetroot makes it ideal for fighting iron deficiency and anemia in our body. These root veggies are loaded with iron and give you a nice energy boost too, making them the perfect snack for that 3 p.m. slump. But don't stop there. Spinach, blackstrap molasses, and parsley are also on Dr. O'Neill's go-to list. Yep. Parsley. Who knew that little garnish on your plate was actually packed with iron? Throw some in your salads, soups, or even smoothies, and you've got a hidden little iron source that's also refreshing. Next time you're feeling off, it might be more than just a long day. It could be your body crying out for some iron-rich TLC. That's why we wrinkle so young. Is that why we begin to lose energy and begin to walk over a little bit? We don't walk straight no more. You see, we don't notice when we're doing this until we weigh down here, you know? But we gradually bend because iron has dropped below that level that the body desires to be. So you're thinking, all right, I'll just eat some iron-rich foods and call it a day. But it turns out it's not always that simple. Here's the twist. Our modern lifestyle actually messes with how much iron our bodies can absorb. Between processed foods, environmental toxins, and even the way our soil has changed, Getting enough iron isn't just about eating right anymore. Dr. Bobby Price explains that factors like stress, lack of sleep, and even pollution can make it harder for your body to absorb iron. This is probably when you're not, when you're having enough come into your diet, I mean you're consuming the right kind and the right amount, but you're still not getting iron levels where you need it to be. It could be because you have low stomach acid. And the reason why is because when you have low stomach acid, the issue would be that you need stomach acid to be able to break down the food properly enough so that you can actually absorb not only iron, but calcium too. So when you have low stomach acid, you're gonna notice that you're gonna have a lot of mineral deficiencies. Think of it like trying to fill a leaky bucket. No matter how much iron you pour in, only a little sticks. And this is where Dr. Price suggests some smart food hacks. His favorite, quinoa and chickpeas. These foods not only pack a good amount of iron, but also contain fiber and other nutrients that help keep your system balanced, making it easier to absorb the iron. Then there's amla, a fruit packed with vitamin C that acts like a superhero for iron absorption. 
Dr. Price and Eris Latham, the king of raw foods, swears by pairing iron-rich foods with vitamin C sources to really up your iron game. So next time you're having that spinach salad, maybe throw in some bell peppers or squeeze a bit of lemon on top. Turns out, boosting your iron intake is as much about the right combos as it is about what you're actually eating. Now, Dr. Sebi has a pretty straightforward rule when it came to iron. If it's not natural, your body probably doesn't want it. When we talk about iron, we have to be very careful because there are two forms of iron. One that is ferrosulfate. That iron would cause you to bind and prevent you from using the toilet. But the other iron is a vegetable iron, one that is obtained from plants, such as the sarsaparilla. He was all about finding iron in pure, plant-based sources that work with your body instead of stressing it out. According to him, the best iron sources come straight from the earth. No pills or artificial supplements needed. Dr. Sebi was a huge fan of herbs like burdock root and dandelion greens. Yep, those weeds you see growing outside are actually iron-rich powerhouses if you know how to use them. Burdock root, for instance, isn't just loaded with iron, but also helps cleanse the blood, giving your body a nice, natural boost without the synthetic stuff. And dandelion greens, besides iron, they're packed with vitamins A and C, which are major players in helping your body absorb and use iron effectively. Another iron-rich favorite of Dr. Sebi's? Sarsaparilla root. This root isn't just a throwback to old-timey sodas. It's a potent source of iron that helps replenish the body and gives you lasting energy. So, if you're looking to boost your iron the natural way, Dr. Sebi would say, go straight to the source and let plants do the heavy lifting. His approach might be unconventional, but it's all about letting nature work its magic. Dr. Barbara O'Neill agrees with Dr. Sebi on one key point. Forget the pills and let food be your medicine. Her iron-boosting advice is simple and practical. Turn to nutrient-dense, iron-packed whole foods that your body can actually use. According to her, if you're constantly reaching for supplements, you might just be missing out on foods that deliver iron in a way that's easy on your system. So what does she recommend? Blackstrap molasses. This thick, sweet syrup is loaded with iron, calcium, and magnesium making it a perfect addition to your morning tea or smoothie if you need an iron pick-me-up. And don't underestimate humble foods like parsley and nettle tea. Turns out these little extras pack more iron than you'd think. Just a sprinkle of parsley in your salad or a warm cup of nettle tea can go a long way. Dr. O'Neill's go-to method is to build up iron slowly with food, rather than shocking the body with high-dose supplements. Her approach focuses on integrating these iron-rich foods with daily meals, creating a steady, natural way to support your energy and health. So next time you're looking to power up your diet, try adding a spoonful of blackstrap molasses or tossing some parsley into your meals. You might be surprised at the difference it makes. Dr. Bobby Price and Eris Latham, both champions of the alkaline diet, believe that getting enough iron is only part of the equation. For them, it's all about balance. They say the real secret for getting and keeping iron levels up is to maintain a balanced, alkaline environment in the body. Why? Because a balanced pH level helps your body absorb iron more effectively, letting you get the most out of every bite. So what's their iron game plan? Dr. Price and Latham love alkaline-friendly foods that bring the iron without the acidity. Amaranth, for example, is a super grain high in iron and known to support alkaline balance perfect for people trying to keep things in check. For those green smoothie fans out there, they recommend adding dandelion greens and watercress. Not only are they packed with iron, but they're also alkalizing, helping your body absorb that iron more smoothly. Their philosophy is pretty straightforward. The more you eat natural, alkalizing foods, the better your body can use the iron you're giving it. So when in doubt, think green and leafy. It's not just about iron, but creating the perfect environment for that iron to shine. A little amaranth here, some dandelion greens there, and you're on the path to balanced, long-lasting energy. Dr. Colin Campbell and Dr. Milton Mills are big believers in the power of plants. And when it comes to iron, they argue that plant-based sources are where it's at. They say that the iron in plants is more than enough to meet your needs, and it comes with extra perks like fiber and antioxidants that animal sources just don't deliver. According to them, plant-based iron sources are easier for your body to handle without risking overload, which can sometimes happen with animal-based iron. So what's on their iron-rich menu? Legumes, like lentils and chickpeas, are major stars, offering iron in a way that's gentle on your system and loaded with additional nutrients. 
Then there's tofu, a favorite for those looking to bump up their iron while sticking to a plant-based diet. Tofu packs a solid amount of iron and is also rich in protein, making it a satisfying option. And let's not forget chia seeds. These tiny powerhouses may be small, but they're brimming with iron, omega-3s, and fiber. Dr. Mills points out that sprinkling chia seeds into your diet, whether in smoothies, oatmeal, or even baked goods, can give you a daily iron boost that's easy and convenient. For Dr. Campbell and Dr. Mills, the bottom line is simple. Plant-based iron sources bring more to the table than just iron. They bring balance, supporting your body with a mix of nutrients that help you feel energized without any of the heaviness. So when looking to up your iron intake, they'd say go green, go plant-based, and let nature take care of the rest. So we've covered all the juicy details on iron, why it's essential, the sneaky symptoms of deficiency, and the best whole foods our experts recommend. But here's the big takeaway, Boosting your iron isn't just about eating more, it's about creating the right environment for your body to actually use that iron. From balancing your pH with alkaline-friendly foods to adding in vitamin C for absorption, getting enough iron is as much about how you eat as it is what you eat. Think of it this way, iron is the unsung hero of our health. It quietly powers your energy, supports your immune system, and keeps your brain sharp, all without asking for much. But without it, everything feels just a little harder, a little slower. So next time you feel that afternoon slump creeping in, don't just blame it on sleep or stress. Check your diet, toss in some iron-rich foods, and give your body the tools it needs to thrive. So why would someone be low in hydrochloric acid? If someone's eating every couple of hours, that exhausts the digestive enzymes, so they're low in hydrochloric acid. If someone drinks with their meals, it waters down their hydrochloric acid. If someone overeats, overburdens the stomach, it exhausts hydrochloric acid. If someone's highly stressed <laughs> when they're eating, that exhausts hydrochloric acid. So to boost hydrochloric acid, only eat at mealtimes, only drink between meals. When you sit down to dine, I read this in an old book. Cast off care and anxious thought when you sit to dine. No stressful things should be discussed at the meal table because it does interfere with your ability to digest. If I had, if any of my children made a fuss at the meal table, I quickly pick them up, put them outside, shut the door. <laughs> they quickly get the message, they can come back. So the meal table should be a peaceful time. So how can you boost hydrochloric acid other than doing all that? Take a little bit of cayenne pepper with your meal, that'll wake anything up. Uh, having the juice of a lemon with a little very hot water just before the meal, that can also boost hydrochloric acid. So you need to boost hydrochloric acid to uh, have the acid to release the iron from the food. Ferritin is iron stores and the body uses protein to bind with iron to stir it as ferritin. So often people with low ferritin levels, it's because they're not eating enough protein. And they may be eating enough protein, but if they haven't got enough hydrochloric acid, they can't break down the protein. So my suggestion is boost hydrochloric acid and start making sure you have lentils every day, uh, nuts and seeds with the meal to boost the protein levels. Who knew that feeling your best could be as simple as a bowl of lentils or a handful of spinach? It might sound small, but iron could just be the secret ingredient you didn't know you needed. And here's the kicker. If you follow these tips from Dr. Sebi, Dr. Price, Dr. Barbara O'Neill, and all of the other experts, you'll be well on your way to a healthier, more energized life. So go on, grab some dandelion greens, sprinkle some chia seeds, and let's toast to iron, the silent superstar of your diet.